In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. In Ireland, an ordinary family is suddenly plagued by frightening phenomena they cannot explain. The terrifying encounters become more frequent and dangerous as a tormented spirit feeds off their fears. With nowhere to turn, they gamble on a spiritual healer who uncovers supernatural wounds that prayers alone cannot heal. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Along the western shores of Ireland, lies the ancient port city of Galway, where the river Carib empties into the Galway Bay. It is a place of legends and mystery, where sometimes you can still hear the faint whispers of lost souls. For nearly 30 years, the Fahey family has lived in a government-subsidized home in Galway. During the week, Jackie Fahey is a bus driver for special needs children. His wife, Esther, works as a cook at a nearby childcare center. Yeah, we were just an ordinary family. You know, we just lived our life and we were quite happy. In 1996, their daughter, Martha, gives birth to a baby girl, Sarah Louise. When Sarah Louise came to our home, everything seemed to be so wonderful. And we could look after her and care for her. Jackie is immediately captivated by his granddaughter. Oh, it's all right, thanks. Everyone in the house just wanted to hold her and hug her. And... Jackie's son, Michael, also lives in the house with his fiancée, Anne. So when, uh, when Sarah Louise came into the house, it was like a new beginning for the family. Myself and my girlfriend were in the process of getting married and I had started my own business. It looked like a very, very bright future. A few months after Sarah Louise's birth, the neighbors begin renovating. Days later, there was like a smell, it was like rotting meat, rotting flesh. Maybe a rat died somewhere under the floorboards. <coughs> the drains were bad. What are you doing? It's an awful smell here. Oh, God, you're right. I told you. Where is it coming from? Don't know, that's what I'm trying to figure out. It smelled like death. Dirty. Fleshy smell. Or like something died. Alright, 
thought it was coming from over here. But now there's nothing. And, and the smell was sort of moving around the house. Oh. Oh. It's back here now. Oh, it's like it keeps shifting. Maybe it's the pipes. Oh. I'd call the landlord. The next morning. Oh, thank God you're here. Come in. I don't think we could take this smell much longer. Where's the problem? Well, that's just it. We can't figure out where it's coming from. Awful, isn't it? Can you describe the smell? It's like something decaying. I... Wait, you don't smell that. It's stronger upstairs. Do you get it now? The smell of rotten meat. Look, we don't smell anything. How can you not smell that? Look, we're already here, we'll check the pipes, and all the drains outside. That's it then. That's all you're going to do? The problem is not in your pipes. These fellas things were nuts. Pure nuts. A lonely bin job. But we're really going crazy. What is it? Where's it coming from? Over the next few days, the smell becomes worse. I really start to clean them. Cleaning, 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 trying to get rid of the smell. Couldn't get rid of it. I'm feeling sick again. Let's get a bit of air. Aye. The smell was getting so strong. Everybody in the house was nausea. And uh, we didn't know what to do. A few weeks later, the smell vanishes as suddenly as it appeared. Martha, take care of her baby. She's not crying. She must have gotten up. Huh? All right, give me a moment. I'll be back. There's something really strange and weird going on here. I taught you when to go take care of the baby. I did. And why is she still crying? She isn't. She's not crying. Well, she's sometimes crying. I felt like somebody was Michael? pushing on my chest. Michael? What's the matter? Couldn't Michael, speak, matter? couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> 
As we prayed, the crying was getting worse. Jesus Christ. Getting louder and louder as if we were physically hurting the spirit. What is going on here? So we stopped praying and the crying just wasn't there anymore. was very, very withdrawn. It wasn't the Michael I knew. Well, there was a baby crying, but it wasn't Sarah Louise. <laughs> what are you talking about? The neighbours don't have any babies. I think there's something in the house. I think it may have hidden the bottles too. A ghost. <laughs> don't you even be fooling about that. I, I didn't Sir. really believe him. I didn't believe anything like that, you know, life after death. Absurd. Had too many pints at the pub, huh? No, I heard it too. There's no ghost, I tell you. Now help us hunt. If there's a ghost here, give us a sign. There you go. There's no ghost. Now get dressed before you're late for work. And he kind of passed it off because he wouldn't put it down to anything whatsoever strange happening, as he would say. Forget about it. That's the way I showed it off. I left it at that. Later that night, Michael and Anne find it impossible to ignore the ghostly crying. heard your voices. A bit late to be praying, eh? Surely you heard the baby crying. All I've heard is the two of you getting louder and louder. Now quiet down and let the rest of us get some sleep. I said, let it go, Mike. But I didn't really want to know. A week later, Jackie and Martha bring Sarah Louise home from a doctor's appointment. just going on that I couldn't explain but I was afraid to say it you know
and it was like a bright orb. It just dissipated and then disappeared. I don't think we actually slept that night whatsoever. Brighter than a thousand candles. And then it just faded away until it slowly disappeared. Could have been a car. I see headlights every night. This was far brighter. I tell you, I have a ghost in the house. Don't you be saying that. Oh, he kept telling me. He said, it's true, it is true. I was very upset. Do you swear you didn't put those Tories in a circle? I never touched them. That's when I realised we have something going on in the house. Something maybe not normal. We should ask a priest for help. He won't believe us. We'll put a tape recorder in the baby's room. Uh, capture the sound of the ghost crying. We'll try it tonight. the tapes. They're downstairs. I'm sorry, Dad. Uh, what on earth was that? What's wrong? What happened? I heard a noise. Get smashed like that. Something must have thrown it. And hard too. There was a crash and, and the boys they went upstairs and I don't know if it's just <laughs> The curtains was pulled with vengeance. I was very frightened. That moment of fear. They were opening closer by themselves. Pure fear in, the, in our eyes. Everyone out of the house now! <laughs> the family takes shelter with their neighbors, who have been close friends for years. You're more than welcome to stay the night. Oh, thanks. But it'd be grand. Our mm. neighbours was very good. They'd make beds and put us on the floor. Our neighbour were wonderful. What do you really think is going on in your house? Couldn't do enough know. to help you us. You really think it's spirits, do you? The first thing in the morning, I'll call the church. A few days later, in the name of the Father, a local parish priest comes to bless the house. Amen. Grace and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Lord, we have sinned against you. Sir Louise was quite happy in my arms. Hey Lord, show us your mercy. Father, do you hear that? Do you hear that crying? Well, surely you hear that. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The more prayers you were saying, Lord, the more the ghost baby screaming, screaming. In other words, get out. Don't want you here. And I knew he heard it. I could tell by the look on his face he was petrified. Oh, saints of heaven, come to our aid. I couldn't keep from shaking. That's how scared I was. Gabriel and Gabriel for the deliverance of our brothers and sisters who are enslaved by the evil one.
Jackie asks the priest to bless Sarah Louise's room. That's wrong. The crib's against the door. That's impossible. See, Father, I told you, there's something in this house. Well, maybe one of you did it. I couldn't have put the crib up against the door. How will we get out? After you, Father. Lord God of heaven and earth, bless this house and all who inhabit it. Fill them with the light of Christ that their concerns for others may reflect your love. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. That's all. It's done. I'll be gone now. The priest couldn't wait to get out of the house. He packed his bag and out the door. are hopeful the priest's blessing will quiet the restless spirit in their house. Just to be safe, that night the family sleeps together. This jug just came right up in front of me. Tilted. And I remember turning, falling down the stairs. And then coming to, to my senses, out in front of the house. What happened? Said, uh... It's very hard to describe what it feels like when something comes into your house to invade it. It was awful, really. I don't think any of us should go back to that house tonight. Again. The family takes refuge with their neighbours. So does Anne. My sister's got room. We could all go down. Aye, but it's a four-hour drive. And I mean, I wish I could. Jackie, I need to get out of the house. I need a rest. And I don't know what else to do. Or I'll go back and pack our suitcases. You stay here. I'll fetch you. I'll go with you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Jackie arranges for he and Esther to stay with his sister for the weekend. I felt really scared leaving my daughter and my son and grandchild behind us. I wish you were all coming down. I don't feel good about you staying. You got jobs to get to, Dad. Martha? We'll be fine, Dad. It's never done anything to me or the baby. She was thinking, well, I'm going to try and blot it out and pretend nothing's happening for the sake of her child. We will be fine, Dad. Take care of him, I promise. We'll be back in a couple of days. We were frightened, leaving the kids, but we just had to get away.
The next day, with her parents out of town and Michael and Anne at work, Martha is alone in the house with Sarah Louise. to the neighbor for help. Seeing the baby over at the neighbors. I'll go fetch him. And do you want me to go with you? No, no, just stay here. Michael decides to let his parents know that they're leaving the house. It was like they didn't want me to phone. Oh. The phone was melted. I was petrified. I felt like someone was actually pushing me away. Just go, go now, leave. After a few days away, the Fay family reluctantly returns to their house. Let's take a look. Jackie can't afford a new home. Esther, come on. He knows the city of Galway has a long waiting list for housing. Come on, love. 
It's not my house. I don't have a house anymore. You don't have any place else to go. It would be at least five years on the list before we'd get another house. We'll make this right. It was like someone came in and ransacked the place, but there was nothing missing. Come on, everyone. Let's put things right. We felt invaded. Somebody had just moved in, taken over my house. I wanted my house back. I used to love this house. We had nowhere to turn. Now I don't want to live here anymore. Come on, love, don't lose heart. We're going to beat this thing. We've got to do something. Like what? The family was just literally falling know. apart at the seams. Where do we get help? Call a radio program. Or maybe one of the papers. They'll make fun. Maybe. But someone might hear our story and come and help. Michael's right. This is our home. We're not going to just let it push us out. We had to confront this. You're right. It wasn't going to put us out of our own home. After being there for 30 years. The first. Let's get our home looking clean again. It's either me or the ghost that's going to go. I'm going to get rid of this out of my house. It's the last thing I do. A Dublin radio station airs an interview with the Fays. The interview prompts a local newspaper to send a reporter to spend the night in the ghost house. Be the reporter. That I am, Fiona Tanner. Anna, please, come in. I felt a bit happy that, okay, somebody out there listened to us. Michael. Fiona Tanner, glad to meet you. And I'm Esther. The room is yours. Just make sure you're right that we're looking for someone to help fix this problem. She came to the house and said, well, look, I don't believe in ghosts, don't believe in this, don't believe in that. But can I stay anyway? Is that fine? We knew when something was going to happen. The house would grow cold. Cold in here by the minute. Excuse me. Do you mind if I use your kitchen table to write my story? Go right ahead. Aren't you going to write your story after you stay all night? I thought I'd get started now, since it doesn't look like anything's going to happen. Cold, isn't it? Porcelain everywhere, literally on the carpet, and there was tiny, minute pieces that had spread all over the place. And she was so frightened. I think it was that point she actually she realised that there is something going on here. I felt relieved actually oh, that someone believed us, you know, that we were not going crazy. According to the Fahey family, the Galway ghost seems determined to drive them out. 
It began with foul spills. The newspaper's eyewitness account piques the interest of reporters from all over Europe. The story is dubbed the Galway Ghost. I'm Claudia O'Rourke, reporting from Galway. There they are. We're Shoot literally them. splashed in every paper in Ireland. Um, we were on nearly every radio station. It was just this major big media explosion. Ma'am, you care to comment on rumours that you simply want Galway Council to find you no home? Oh, of course not. And I thought people were talking, whispering, you know, and say, you know, they're, they're the people, that's crazy. Sir, we've heard reports of paranormal activity in your house. Can you please give us something? Listen, we didn't ask for this. But sir, what about the, we had a, is there a baby involved? I was very frightened. Nobody would be able to do anything for us or get rid of what was in the house. Several days later, a reporter calls Jackie, recommending the services of someone he thinks can help his family. Sandra Ramdani is a renowned parapsychologist and healer with degrees in psychology and metaphysics. I was reluctantly drawn out of the world of science and psychology into the world of the paranormal. Studying psychology helped me know more about the human mind. So if I go into a house where people think paranormal activity is going on, it enables me to find where the person is coming from you know, whether it's a, a nervous problem as opposed to a spirit activity problem. She's here. Jackie is hopeful that Sandra can help his family. Sandra, hello. Welcome. I was very, very skeptical. I, I didn't believe in psychics, to be honest. Maybe this lady there. might be the you. one. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, this is my son, Mike. Oh, hello, Mike. As nice soon as she walked in, you got this warm feeling. Like you knew her for a hundred years. My daughter, Martha. Well, hello, Martha. It's nice to see you. My first task really was to put the family at ease. I was very worried about Martha and Esther and just tried to bond with them a little bit and let them get to know me. Esther was terribly, terribly drained. Won't you sit down? Thank you so very much. My goodness, what a beautiful little baby. Sarah Louise didn't appear to be affected in a bad way. A little bundle of joy. So I was very happy to see that, the, you know, there were no ill effects on her. Tell me now, what, what was the first strange thing that you noticed? Well, it started with a terrible We knew we had found someone that, would, that was going to do something good for us. No matter how much we cleaned and cleaned and took out the rubbish, it's got worse and worse. It started about a month after the grandbaby was born. The interesting information that I got out of this was it started when baby Sarah Louise arrived in the house. I asked them to bring me to the room where they felt the most activity happened which was Sarah Louise's bedroom upstairs. I place my hands against the walls to get an idea of what sort of energy is there, what type of spirit you're dealing with. Has there been recent construction here? No, we haven't done anything. Uh, wait, wait, don't you remember that? They were doing construction next door on the other side of the wall. I had to move Sarah's crib. You're right. Uh, there was construction just before all of this began. It freaked me out when she was able to tell me that the neighbours were doing construction. Could I stay here alone for a while? Well, if I meditate, I might get something. to pick up psychic information. It's almost like I'm, I'm listening really hard, They're trying to invite the spirits of the place to come and communicate. The 
first thing I noticed was a smell like from smoke. I opened my eyes and I'm in this completely different room. I close my eyes. A young girl was giving birth. Her father, I felt he was her father, looked very upset, sad. There was a shadowy man in the background. Um, he seemed to be very, very stern, maybe angry. was reaching forward, screaming, screaming for her baby as he smothered the child and killed it. and take tea with you and the family. Oh, hi. I believe the baby was born out of wedlock. And from shame, the father of the girl and the father of the baby had it killed. Oh, horrible. How could anybody do such a thing? Uh, what's that got to do with our house? Well, the spirit baby isn't haunting your house, it's haunting the land. Well, I think the construction disturbed the baby's spirit. And then you've recently had a baby. I think the spirit baby wants to get close to you, wants to be mothered by you. It was like sibling rivalry, kind of battling, in a sense, for affection. Sandra explains that she will attempt a healing ceremony to help the ghost move on and find peace. But the first thing I need is for someone to take Sarah out of the house. Well, I wanted the child safely out of, of the way, um, just in case things started flying around the place. No, no, not you, Martha. I, I need you here to help me get rid of the ghost. The missus and I will take Sarah for a stroll. will protect us during the healing ceremony. And the courts will purify and recharge your home, especially in this room. Will this work? Ah, that would be perfect right there. Thank you. Now if I could all have you all join hands. Just close your eyes and breathe deep, cleansing breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. Slowly, just concentrate on your breathing. Now, 
Imagine the spirit baby in the bassinet. See him with your mind's eye. Just keep concentrating, focus, listen to my voice. That's right. Now picture the spirit baby in the bassinet and send all of your energy to this baby to help move him over to the next world. Martha, Martha, you must keep your eyes closed. Must all of you, you must concentrate, you must focus, continue focusing on this baby. Yes, that's right, that's good. Now I want you to picture this baby surrounded by, by a golden light. See him, see him begin to rise. He's rising, rising. Visualize the baby rising right up out of the house. I seen this baby in a white cloth going up into the light. Into the hands of his loved ones. Crossing over into the next world. That's right. feeling, everybody was laughing. Jackie and Esther noticed the difference the moment they returned. It's gone, isn't it? Uh, you can tell, can't you? I... It just felt I like, like a holiday in a hot country. You felt that warm air, the sunshine on you. It felt fantastic. I feel like I've got my home again. It was just like heaven just to be, have the house our own again and peaceful and quiet. I'm just so glad to have my house back again. I believe we were specially picked to send this baby up into the light to rest it and have peace. Join us for dinner. Well, thank you, Esther. I'd love to. Of all the badness I had in my house, something good came out of it. Today, the Fays continue to live in their home, which is known across Ireland as the House of the Galway Ghost. We know it's gone, we know it'll never come back. But the little voice in the back of your head says, OK, will it come back again? 